Welcome to Biomass Magazine's top headlines from the past week. I'm your host, Jacob Noterman. Before we get started, I'd like to thank this edition's sponsor, Christensen's Biofuels Financial Conference. The event, scheduled for September 27th and 28th in Minneapolis, aims to help those in the ethanol and biodiesel industries make the best use of capital and resources. Attendees will learn how to create a well-managed plan for growth and change that maximizes profitability while ensuring future stability. The conference is produced by Christensen PLLP and organized by BBI International. Visit biofuelsfinancialconference.com for more information. Plans are falling in place for Dong Energy to convert its Usnes power station in Kallenborg, Denmark from coal to wood chips. On June 21st, the European Commission announced that the project qualified for Danish support for up to $64.5 million to help support conversion of the thermal power unit. Dong also recently secured a 20-year steam and district heating contract with the city of Kallenborg. The conversion is planned to begin in the summer of 2017, and the power station is expected to be ready for wood chip fired production by the end of 2019. It will bring the number of Denmark fossil fuel plants Dong Energy has converted to seven. According to a new report from Wood Resources International, wood pellet imports to Asia reached an all-time high in the fourth quarter of 2016, when Japan and South Korea together imported 630,000 tons of pellets. Although import volumes to Asia were down slightly in the first quarter of 2017, they were still over 40% higher than in the first quarter of 2016. South Korea is by far the main destination for pellets in Asia, according to WRI, and in 2016, the country was the world's third largest importer of pellets, trailing only the United Kingdom and Denmark. Consumption of pellets in Japan and South Korea has increased quite rapidly the past four years because of new government requirements which favor reducing carbon emissions and increasing the usage of renewable energy. In the bio refining sector, Royal Dutch Shell, through its subsidiary Shell International Exploration and Production BV and SBI Bioengineering Inc., have reached an agreement granting Shell exclusive development and licensing rights for SBI's biofuel technology. Edmonton, Alberta based SBI has a patented process that can convert a wide range of waste oils, greases, and sustainable vegetable oils into lower carbon drop-ins for diesel, jet fuel, and gasoline. Under the agreement, Shell and SBI will work together to demonstrate the potential of the technology and, if successful, scale up for commercial application. On Capitol Hill on June 21st, Democratic leaders in the House Energy and Commerce Committee sent a letter to U.S. EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt asking him to detail policies and procedures the agency has put in place to prevent Carl Icahn from influencing the EPA's position on the renewable fuel standard for personal financial gain. Icahn is the majority owner of CVR Energy, a petroleum refining company involved in the renewable identification number, or RIN, market. In late December, he was also named as a special advisor to President Donald Trump on issues related to regulatory reform. The letter details several statements made by ICON criticizing the RFS and questions financial gains made by ICON and his companies following reports of policy recommendations he has made regarding the RFS. According to the letter, CVR saw shares rise 10% the day after ICON was named as a special advisor to the president. The letter is the latest in a series of actions by federal lawmakers seeking answers to ICON's role in setting RFS policy. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with more of the biomass industry's top stories.